Hey, we are live and alive. Okay, we're on example three. Write cosine of 3x in terms of cosine of 1x. All right, I'll bring that 3 out front and call it 3 cosine of x. Done. Questions? This is how we do it on a Friday. All right. Fun Friday, freaky Friday. Probably no one's going to object to that, right? Yeah. But it is it, right. it? It looks right. Is it right? Is cosine, is it cosine is an even function, yeah. The three would compress the graph by a factor of three horizontally, right? So you'd see three cycles where you previously saw one. So the period would be cosine of two pi thirds. Um, you can't do that. That's not correct. Well, because... I don't know. I'm not feeling so great. Um, and it's Freaky Friday. That's right. Now, um, <clears throat> let's see. Truth be told, changing angles is not that easy. You have to use the angle identities that we've learned, uh, which are the composite identities and the double angle identities. Those are the only ones we've learned. Um, so in general, changing angles is not fun or ideal. It's, uh, it requires a little bit of work. So I think we could do this. Let's do it together. First thing I'm going to do is write cosine of 3x as 2x plus 1x. Now that's true, right? Inside the parentheses, 3x is equal to 2x plus x. <coughs> and now we can use our composite identities, selfish cosine, right? Cosine of the first, cosine of the second. And what becomes of the sine in between? Changes, so now it's minus sine of the first, sine of the second. Now notice we are kind of making progress because look there. See, I got a cosine of 1x. That's what I wanted. Okay, but I got all those other dudes that are not cosine of 1x. So, hmm, I guess I got to keep, keep on keeping on. So as we saw in the composite identity section, <clears throat> we had to write those as x plus x, but... We don't have to do that anymore because we have the double angle identities. So let's go ahead and write cosine of 2x as cosine squared minus sine squared. And notice I'm putting in parentheses now because why? Freaky Friday. <laughs> uh, yeah, because it's two terms now, right? <clears throat> and that cosine on the back would need to now get distributed. Um, Sine of 2x, remember we said, is only one term, so you don't need parentheses. That's 2 sine of x times cosine of x. So the, the double angle for cosine gives you two terms. The double angle for sine just gives you one term times the sine of x. Okay, so all we did is we, we replaced that with that and that with that. And now, why is that important? Because at least now all of our angles are single x's, right? They're all single x's. So let's go ahead and distribute the cosine from the right-hand side into there. And we get cosine cubed of x, bless you, minus sine squared x times cosine x. And over here, there's nothing to distribute, so we just combine the, the factors that are like factors. So we got 2 sine squared of x, cosine of x. Okay, well, let's see. How are we doing? We have cosine of x there, cubed, cosine of x there, and cosine of x there. So we're getting closer to having everything in terms of cosine of x. But who do we still have floating around? Sine squared, right? So is there a way to write sine squared in terms of cosine squared? Yeah, there is. So here's where you want to be careful again. Let's put parentheses around them because there's something out front that would need to be distributed. And when we use Papa Pid, which I know is what y'all are thinking, <clears throat> this turns again into two terms. And so we would need to have parentheses there so that we remember to distribute. So sine squared is equal to what in terms of cosine squared? One minus, One minus cosine squared. Good. 
and 1 minus cosine squared. So now there's a whole lot of cosine squareds floating around, and we've kind of met the challenge. Everything that's in there that's a trig function is cosine of x, some power of cosine of x. So you can walk away here and, and be successful, but I'm going to want to simplify this. So let's see if we could do that, make it look a little prettier. Okay. Now, you got to be careful on this next one here because we're not just distributing a negative. We're distributing a negative and a cosine. Okay, one from each side. So we're really distributing a negative cosine. So that's going to be a negative cosine of x and positive cosine cubed of x. Okay, when you distribute that. And same thing on the next one. We're not just distributing a negative 2. We're distributing a negative 2 cosine. One factor from either side. So that's going to be negative 2 cosine of x and then positive 2 cosine cubed of x. And if that was too much for you, you could take a whole other line where you're writing these cosine factors in the front of those terms if you want, if it'll help you. Okay, now that it's all completely expanded, all we have to do is collect like terms. And we usually start with the, the largest power. So uh, that would be cubed. So we have how many cosine cubes floating around in there? 1 plus 1 plus 2 makes 4 of them. 4 cosine cubes. And then we just have cosine of x terms. Minus 1 minus 2 of them makes minus 3 of them. And that's it. We have succeeded. We are awesome on this Friday. I just made up this song. And now it's over. Okay. Yeah. Any comments or questions on that? That's pretty cool, right? That's pretty cool. <clears throat> so if you were to graph cosine of 3x, you would see Chala, you know, with an amplitude of 1, going three full cycles between 0 and 2 pi. If you were to graph 4 cosine cubed minus 3 cosine x, you would see Chala, three cycles of it from negative 1 to 1 on the y-axis. Three cycles between 0 and 2 pi. They're the same thing. They're exactly the same thing. Okay, but one's in terms of single angle and exclusively cosine. All right, now here's kind of something that's, that's interesting. Um, we can always write cosine of a multiple angle, like 3x, as a polynomial in terms of cosine with that same power. Okay? So just like we can write cosine of 2x in terms of cosine squared, Remember, that was an identity for just cosine squared. We can write cosine of 3x in terms of cosine cubed. If we had a cosine of 4x, we can write it as cosine to the fourth, so on and so forth. So that in general, if we have anything of the form cosine of nx, we can write it as an nth degree polynomial of cosine. Just something kind of interesting. Just a, just a neat observation, right? So if you ever had cosine of 10x, you could write it as a 10th degree polynomial of cosine of 1x. Now, that only works for cosine, unfortunately. It doesn't work for sine. So, I guess cosine selfishness kind of enabled him to be able to do that. I don't know. All right. Um, I said we're going to work two examples today, right? We got one done? I think we did two already. Did we do two already? It felt like two, right? Because the first one, I brought the three out front, and that counted as one? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, let's just do one more, because uh, that was that was just manipulating an expression. We got to get at least one proof in a day, right? Because y'all's eventual test will be chock full of proofs. You'll have to do seven proofs out of nine. Ooh, all right. So when proving an identity, when proving an identity in which the an an analges, what the heck, analges, analgesics. Like Tylenol? What's what 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 is this idiot trying to say here? Tylenol. tylenol. Yeah, I think so. Um, when proving an identity in which the Tylenol on one side are different than those on the other, it should be a priority to get. Oh, now we're talking about angles, uh, the same by using the identity. So that's what I told you already the other day. Um, that your, your first priority now is to get the angles the same, and it's easier to tear down 
than it is to build up. So if you drop the perp, uh, notice we have single X's on the right, and we have a triple angle on the left, along with some single angles. So we got to get them all in the terms of the same. I don't think I want to build up the single X's um, to give me a 3X. I'd rather tear down the 3X. So let's start over here, and we'll do the same thing that we did for cosine. Uh, we'll start by calling it sine of dos equis plus un equi, all over sine of x, cosine of x. Okay, and now we can use the composite identity in the numerator. Sine is selfless, remember, so it's sine of the first, cosine of the second, sine, same sine. That didn't sound right. Sine, same sine. There you go. That took some energy. Um, sine of the second times cosine of the first. All over the product. Sine x, cosine x. All right, so now, uh, again, we are faced with sine of 2x and cosine of 2x. But instead of having to use the composite identity again and call it x plus x, we can go straight to um, the double angle identities that we've <coughs> memorized, right? Memorized? Yeah, good. Memorized. So sine of 2x, remember, is one term. It's 2 sine x cosine x times the cosine x that's there plus sine of x times the cosine of 2x, which is two terms. So guess what we're going to need? Parentheses, good. Cosine squared of x minus sine squared of x. Bless you. Bottom n. Oops, notice on the first line in the denominator, what did I forget behind the cosine? An x. I might forgive the first one on the test, but if I see another one, you'll lose a point. Okay, so make sure you have your variables behind there. All right, um, okay, so now we're in terms of single x. Uh, we got to get in terms of cosine and secant. So let's do what we did on the previous one. Let's just simplify, kind of tidy up things. 2 sine x cosine squared of x plus, um, 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 I guess, um, what can we do? Distribute? I guess we can distribute, right? Uh, I don't know if that's the right thing to do, but hey, I'm going to do it. Minus sine cubed. All over sine of x cosine x. Okay. Um, so, what would you do from here? Anyone? Anyone? We got all the angles the same now. They're all x's. On the left, we have everything in terms of sines and cosines. On the right, we have cosines and not cosines or sines. Would y'all jump to the other side and play around with it just a little bit? Sure. I mean, what would you do? I don't want to. I don't want to make you do anything you don't want to do. Right, you're taking the test and the clock is ticking. Tick. Do we have like terms? Very good. Yeah, so maybe we're not done over here. We do have like terms. Very, very good. Keen observation. That's 3 sine of x. Cosine squared of x minus sine cubed of x all over cosine of x times sine of x. Now, um, again, you could jump to the other side, but notice secant on this side is related to cosine, right? It's 1 over cosine. So really we have nothing but cosines or reciprocals of cosines on the right. Is there a way to get rid of some of the signs over here? What do I have in each term? A sine of x, and I have a sine factor in the bottom. Can I factor the sine out on the top? Yeah, let's do that. Sine of x times, that leaves 3 cosine bless you squared of x bless you minus bless you sine squared of x bless you. You're welcome, bless you. All right, sine of x times cosine of x. All right. So the right side kind of helped us think about that because, again, if you wanted to jump over here, your next step might be minus cosine of x, 1 over cosine of x, right? So you're like, oh, I got all kinds of cosines. So what happens over here now to the sine of x's? Yes, good. They divide out. 
All right, and so now we're left with, uh, okay, let's just take inventory, three cosine squared of x minus sine squared of x all over cosine. All right, so we still have some sine squareds hanging around. Can we change it? Yeah. Now I'm going to put parentheses around it because there's a negative in front. And if we change it using Papa Pid, it's going to generate two terms. So very good. I like that idea. But you do have to be careful. Parentheses are your best friends, right, in a math class. It's better to have them and not need them than to need them and not have them, like a couple of slices of birthday cake in your hand, right? Good, yeah. I don't need this birthday cake, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have it anyway just in case. So what is sine squared? Well, one, minus two, one minus cosine squared. Good. Now if we distribute... We get 3 cosine squared of x minus 1 plus cosine squared of x all over cosine of x. So notice this problem seems like it's long, and we've, we've, gone, we've gone a long way, but, you know, if you just go one step to the next, one step in front of the other, the journey of a 1,000 miles is just one step at a time, right? Yeah. We have like terms again, don't we? 3 cosine squared plus 1 cosine squared. That's 4 cosine squared of x minus 1 all over cosine of x. Hey, that's kind of looking like the other side now. What would you want? Would you want to jump to the other side or keep working on this side? If you were, if you were to jump to this side, you would say, okay, I have a single fractional term on the left. I would need to get a common denominator over here, right? So I would put this over 1 and then do my crisscross applesauce and multiply the first one by cosine over cosine. But you could do the opposite of that, which is to split up the terms, right? As long as you put both terms over the denominator. So remember, it's kind of more desirable to stay on one side. Not that it's required, but it's more desirable. As long as you put... The each term over the entire denominator, that's okay bueno. Now, in the first term, what happens to one of the cosines? They divide out, and we're just left with 4 cosine of x minus, what's another name for 1 over cosine? Secant of x. And is that what we had on the top line on the right side? Yeah, so if you had anything there, you can either uh, just draw a line through it, you know, like I didn't want to do that anyway, or, if you know, erase it. And there it is. That's a beautiful proof. And you know what? It doesn't even know it's beautiful. And that's what makes it beautiful. It's insecure. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, I don't know what for, though. This thing turns heads when it walks into a door. All right. Yeah, I do have a daughter. I do have a daughter. Um, I actually got out of going to the concert with her. Her mother went with her. Uh, did he? Oh, really? <laughs> well, when she was growing up, that she ruled the radio in my car, and so um, I actually kind of, I kind of like some of the songs. You know, they they grew on me. Um, but now she has her own car, and she's into Ariana Grande. So I get to listen to my, I use I get to listen to my screamo metal in my truck again. Oh, they grow up so fast. What? I haven't liked her since she licked that donut and put it back on the stand. You know? Did you ever see that? There was a video of her. She was like in some. Uh, have you seen it? I haven't seen it. Oh yeah, she's like in a in a, in a bakery and she's with them, some guy and she thought it would be funny when when the the guy behind the counter looked away. She grabbed a donut off the display and licked it and put it back on the display. And ever since then, I'm just like that. That ain't cool. That ain't right. She was great, Victorious. Yeah, she was. See, I watched Victorious. Yeah, I actually know some of the songs from Victorious. Um, <clears throat> Why, if you started singing them, I could sing along. Like, uh, I don't know. Also, the Miley Cyrus stuff. Anyway, we're done. We're done for today. Um, so, practice, practice, practice. Memorize your.